Hello and welcome to Orb Team Brick. In today's video, we're starting off with a bright large rocket on the launch pad. And your first stage is using the you know, Saturn V first stage fuel tank, so it's actually an extended variant. The second stage is interesting in its own way, you'll see that later. And it does have a third stage, which has, a, again, an interesting engine on it. Also, you saw rocket motors that you increase thrust weight ratio on a liftoff. And all of this will be a going It's all of this to get something to a Pluto as you assign the Petro Thumbnail. First we have left off, we're probably getting drowned out right now. Yeah, five F on the engines, and two it's, uh, it's extended and tight enough series. I forgot the exact designation. Yeah, it's the longest variant, the eight second variant for the whole. And yes, all of this is to get an uh, interesting payload to Pluto, which will be elaborated on later, who you have seen in the uh, thumbnail, which could give you some guesses as to what it is. Now, yeah, we're going to Pluto without using a gravity assist or anything. We're doing a direct uh, transfer from Earth. And so this is going to take uh, 31 years in total. Now, yeah, we're departing in the year, I believe, uh, 1988, and the craft will arrive at Pluto in 2017. Anyways, that's a long way off from now. First you saw a solid rocket booster detach, and now the first stage is almost near completion. There we go, the M1 engine, yeah, M1 on the second stage. This and the J2 at any configuration of it probably won't have enough thrust for this. And you can see that at third stage, that is a, a Nerva 1 on that. And yeah, you can also even see the small craft that will actually arrive at the Pluto. It's going to be a lander, so we will not be new horizons here. And uh, you can also see a few details of uh, the special payload we're delivering to, to Pluto. Now first I'm going to a state that arrives at the Nerva 1, it's just... It looks weird that there's no other structural pieces on it, but uh, I didn't want to add mass to this when I already made it work. Anyways, I also had to battle with uh, Chatter off during this, since every few seconds it would uh, play that annoying just, uh, signal disconnect sound. But yes, let's uh, plot our burn to Pluto. Now, we're not doing this in one uh, go, obviously. Now, it'll take far too long, and uh, we'd end up with our carrying offices inside the atmosphere, and uh, lots of bad things would happen. Yeah. I'm just uh, saying that I actually got the transfer window correct. I used a Kerbal uh, transfer window planner for this. It, uh, uh, that. Removing a uh, first uh, Kerbal from that, uh, I completely messed up with that. I got confused with Kerbal alarm clock somehow. Anyways. I use Transfer Window Planner, and as you can see, we're able to eventually get a encounter. Now, I decided to split this up into, I believe, four total burns. Now, first, we're burning the second stage to completion. Since uh, we have the Delta V, why not? I'm also transferring some of the RCS product uh, into the uh, transfer, sta transfer stage. Well, since uh, we're, oh, we're low, probably want to conserve the uh, liquid hydrogen we have, yeah, we'll try and use uh, RCS uh, for some of these smaller maneuvers. And also, we need a ledge for this. Those were already through the first of the burns, and right now we're on the second. Where I started a bit late, I have to admit, I didn't count for the spool of time of the Nerva. But uh, now uh, we are burning, and I have uh, going on both of these uh, stages, uh, for uh, second and third, I put uh, 10 layers of multi-layer insulation on each of the uh, tanks. I I felt that that was sufficient for the length of time we were using this. Well, we we'll, we'll basically no longer need this uh, nuclear-powered stage the moment we leave a low Earth orbit. And so, yeah, we don't need to have any of the fuel will just remain in a liquid form, and, just, and we don't need to remain liquid after we end Earth. 
All the maneuvering after that will be done using the hypergolic uh, fuel on the uh, just on the uh, spacecraft you uh, see at the top of the stack. And as also I was talking, we've now just about completed the uh, first, well, the first uh, nuclear-powered burn, I should say. And uh, continuing to adjust the maneuver since Pluto uh, has a tiny sphere of influence, and again it's uh, 30 years away right now. So doing yet another burn, basically going uh, to raise our collapse around Earth uh, right to the edge of its sphere of influence, and then we'll have we'll still have to do a fairly substantial burn as you can see to get the rest of the way on our trajectory. And so here we start our 24 minute burn. Off to a great start since again I start a bit late, but about 15 seconds in we actually do start burning. I love the plume on the nuclear, en nuclear engines, and I actually even got a bit more of a bit more of a view on that uh, payload, which does include uh, four RTGs uh, for power. In case you're wondering, anyway, skipping through that burn, we then do a quick RCS maneuver. Actually, I might. I think I do actually activate the Nerva for this. Am I going to do anything else now? And you uh, see that I will and I will use uh, the remaining uh, fuel to conduct this uh, and this uh, small uh, course adjustment. And uh, from here on, it's uh, 30 years until Pluto, and we will have another course adjustment about uh, 10 years in. And at that point, we'll adjust in the now very empty uh, transfer stage. And at this uh, small stage, again, more views of the mystery payload. This small stage again uses hypergolics. It has a lunar module descent engine for its main propulsion. And I'll try and conserve the limited ignitions and burn time of that by using RCS. By the way, I want to say this is like my only my second, only my second interplanetary, interplanetary mission, and we're just overhaul and already going to Pluto. Anyways, as you can see, I'm plotting yet another small maneuver to adjust our trajectory towards Pluto. I want a low periapsis, ending up getting one slightly below 200 kilometers. And again, using RCS to perform the maneuver. By the way, if you have, if you have your own realism overhaul real solar system install, you might not have additional Pluto moons. They aren't really relevant for this video, but those are from RSS Origin. I realized I probably should I probably should actually just go for RSS Reborn and try and get that working since that looks far better in every single way. But just I tried to install that before and it didn't go well and I'm a bit scared to try it again. But yeah this the additional special values are from RSS Reborn. Anyways here we are, through 13 years after launch in 2017, we are here at Pluto. And now we'll actually get a quick uh, flyby of uh, Sharon in before we uh, perform our orbital insertion burn. And by quick, I mean, I believe we've almost... Yeah, there we go. Uh, I didn't even bother to show the rest of it. But now... Incredibly long burn, uh, 20 minutes to insert into uh, orbit around Pluto. And you might say, doesn't this significantly overburn uh, the uh, lunar module descent engine? Yes, it very much does. I have absolutely no idea why it didn't explode, considering, yeah, it's substantially over its rated burn time. I probably should check that I didn't actually, I didn't accidentally disable, like, test flight. But yeah, I'm not gonna question it. And then use that to deorbit around the Pluto, 
and begin our landing. And uh, I'm also a bit surprised at that uh, small antenna you can see actually is enough for communications, even decent communications, with her. So. You know, this is a fairly standard descent. Pluto not really that hard to land on. As you can see, there actually is an atmosphere which is accounted for. Though know, it didn't really have any effect. Although it actually does mean that uh, you can uh, go without knowledge during parts of uh, your descent, I found. But yeah, we can uh, touch down on Pluto. However, the payload itself should be, uh, it should be able to operate on the surface on its own. It detaches and uh, that's launched a few hundred meters in the air. Not really why, well, I guess, yeah, it is in the air since there is this thin atmosphere. Not really why I intended, but we can ski across the surface. Probably not the best for what the payload is, as you'll see and find out. And eventually right ourselves. And now, here's the big reveal. The yeah, payload is playing laptop. Yes, first of all, this is for a forms challenge, which is to send a computer to any given celestial body. Uh, there's gonna be a link to that challenge in the description. But also, hey, I, like many people, also there's uh, the mass of the computer itself uh, for the uh, forms challenge. But like many people, my computer suffers from uh, heating issues on playing Kerbal Space Program. So I decided to send it to Pluto so it would finally stay cool. Thank you for watching.